Hi, this is Peggy with Natural Awakening Chicago Magazine. Welcome back to our Women in Wellness feature. We're doing a video series this month to go along with our print and digital publication, talking with women in wellness, women healthcare practitioners in the Chicago area. And today I am pleased to be talking with Dr. Mina Malhotra, MD. And Mina is a founder at Heal and Cure and Dr. Mina. Her office is located in Glenview, Illinois. And she is a functional medicine practitioner, empowering patients and providers to collaborate to address the underlying causes of disease. Welcome, Dr. Mina. Hello, Peggy, and hello, everyone. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I'm thrilled to be talking with you today. Um, I really love your approach that you are working with people to try to get past uh, disease management programs and that you're really working with your patients Men and you women. are, yeah, you're absolutely right, Peggy. It's almost time that we start working on the root cause of the problem instead of masking symptoms. You know, almost 50 years ago, we applied this approach for infectious disease. And that changed the medicine for good forever. You know, instead of masking the fever, to bring it down, we found where it was coming from, we used the antibiotic, the root was gone, patient was well. Mm -hmm. Now we have to start doing the same for chronic disease, like blood pressure, cholesterol, um, diabetes, instead of using a chemical to keep the numbers artificially low or where you want them to see, while the disease process is going unregulated inside, the end organ damage is still happening. Yeah. We need to get to the root cause of the problem, which is most of the time visceral adipose tissue or wet fat inside your organs, which is what produces that inflammation, which is what causes the issue. And once we address to that, mm -hmm. these things go away just like when we use an anti microbial, the problem goes away from the root. So it's almost yeah. time we use that approach. Yeah, so you're talking reversal rather than just managing symptoms. Correct. And reversal is a strong, sometimes you might have just let the water rise too hot. But if you are proactive, if you start in time, uh, yes, most of the chronic disease can be turned around. Yeah, and I know, you you do treat many, many things and you do work with people on many conditions. Um, some of them obesity, menopause, diabetes, depression, anxiety, thyroid, things that, that women are seeing so much these days. Heart disease. You know, you know, Peggy, the, once again, the root cause for all these symptoms, what you said is saying, the root cause a lot of time is visceral adipose tissue. It is the toxicity which builds in your system. And all these things fall with your mindset, the hormonal fluctuation. So once you have the energy flow efficiently in your body, mm -hmm. through your gut, through your liver, it goes inside the cells, inside the mitochondria efficiently. And actually, we can convert that food into energy. You start feeling better. And whether you have to lose fat or gain muscle, that happens automatically. It's not a separate issue. Yeah. The goal in functional medicine and our approach is to make the energy flow in your body efficient. And when that happens, you know, your body is a little bit more forgiving. You remember your teenage years, you know, when yeah. you put a party a little more uh, or sleep a little less. But next day, you are still okay. But as the time goes by, the toxicity builds in, mm -hmm. the visceral adipose tissue builds in. Now, all of a sudden, your body's not all as forgiving, yeah. you know, because the energy flow is not efficient. And so the root, the first step, once you do this, slowly, what you said earlier, the chronic disease symptoms, those things start getting resolved and turning away. And you start feeling like how you want to feel. Right, right. So 
I'm sure there are a lot of contributors to disease, but can, uh -huh. can we talk about food a little bit and what oh people my are God. eating? Yes. So food is, you, the food is so vast, Peggy. We can talk till tomorrow and we will yes. still not cover it. Well, right? multi, multi <laughs> here. <laughs> and we can have fun. We can find people uh, advocating for vegan diet mm -hmm. and for keto diet. And there are people you'll find who will say keto is the best, vegan is the best, paleo is the best. You know, it is not a diet. It is what your body needs at that time or that phase of life. Yeah. And for you, it might be some food which is good now and as things change in your body or you start doing something else, there might be a different kind of diet needed. Remember, food is the fuel of your body. And I truly believe you are what you eat. So if you eat spaghetti, you are like spaghetti. So, uh, you know, with no tone and flabby and so on and so forth. So if there is one advice on food, which is always right, is don't eat chemically food. Whether you eat steak or whether you eat cauliflower, it really doesn't matter. They can be eating chemically or processed food. If they are foods uh, which have ingredients which you can pronounce, don't eat it. Mm -hmm. Now, those things, you know, it is unfortunate that we have uh, almost more than 2,000 chemicals approved to be used safely in our country, safely. the European Union, safely. <laughs> and, you know, you can say it is a point, I mean, it's just a little bit. And in minute quantities, it is not shown to interfere with your function. No, the reason is our body doesn't have the enzyme pathways to take care of that. So if you eat too much of a good thing, mm -hmm. you may be a little large, but you won't be unhealthy. But this thing with you are doing the calorie-free uh, sugar or sweetener or, you know, fake butter and all that stuff, those are all chemicals we don't have pathway to process them yeah and when you eat and it is tasting sweet here but inside it is doing something else it gets very confusing signals to the body and that is where the disease process starts happening mm. so uh, whether it is a young uh, child whether you have to lose weight whether you have to gain weight whether you have depression or whether you have diabetes it doesn't matter what you have yeah but i think it is fair to say Eat the food in its closest natural form. You know, it, it is very, very challenging to eat right all the time. It's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. So we have to just do the best and slowly uh, strive for doing better. Yeah. So what works for me is in your pantry, always keep good ingredients. You know, don't and be brave to experiment. You know, if you put good things together mm -hmm. and it didn't taste that, that great because you were, you know, experimenting with a recipe, <laughs> it will still be good for you. Yeah. So you have to leave it. But, you know, and then as you continue, don't be afraid. Mix and match. Mm -hmm. It can't hurt. Nothing bad will happen with it. Right. But if you right. use the right ingredients, it's, mm -hmm. very, it's a lot of fun. To experiment and um, you know venture out in the cooking world and get the kids involved too. Get the kids involved. Oh my God! From very little, don't leave them with a babysitter to go grocery shopping. Tag them along and let them read the labels and just talk about it. Yeah. It is going in that subconscious mind uh, from early on. Yes, that is you absolutely need it. You have to involve. It's a family event and that time in the kitchen should be religious, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have to be the food. Everyone doesn't have to come once the food is on the table. Everyone can be involved in cooking and preparing. And uh, while someone is on the stove, the other can be chopping the food. Yeah. You have to make it a family event together. Mm -hmm. It has to be not only fun to eat when you go out, but it has to be fun when you're cooking in the house too. Yeah. 
Yeah. So how did you get to this point as a physician? What, how did your background lead you to functional medicine and taking this approach, this comprehensive approach to wellness? You know, I, as you know, my training is in internal medicine. Mm -hmm. In internal medicine, what you see is chronic disease. And uh, so all, when I started practice, all my practice I saw, diabetics and high blood pressure and cholesterol, whatever. And I was seeing lots and lots of patients, like about, just like many of my colleagues still do, mm -hmm. many patients to meet the demands of the system. Now doing that, I didn't have time for myself. I didn't have time for my kids. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was eating that standard American diet. And I was really sad. You know, we have met, um, I had maybe 50, 60, I weighed close to 180 pounds back on me. Wow. I was tired, irritable, not sleepy, snappy on my little children. And uh, the answer was this, that I, what I tell patients, my patients right now. And one day I was rounding in the hospital and I said, okay, I Amina, mean, I'm going to do super good today. And I'm going to take the stairs instead of the elevator to go to the hospital floor. Now, what a flight of stairs. I reach up and I was <sighs> huffing and puffing. I reach up there. You know, that moment is etched so well in my memory. It was evening, sun was setting. And as I was walking the corridor, a patient was calling for the nurse help and you know and you know nurse was with somebody else and he just something in the way he was crying literally for help and that hit me that struck me in my heart and I say hey Mina what are you doing here I thought I said hey I am going to drop dead myself walking these corridors mm -hmm. because the way my health was I was sensing it I said, neither I'm helping myself, nor my family, nor my patients. Because, you know, you can keep, like we were talking earlier, all these chronic disease numbers looking all good, but you don't feel good, yeah. you know? No and energy, you still, yeah. no energy, you are tired, you have a brain fog, you can't sleep, can't move your bowels, allergies, so on and so forth. And you end up having the end result like a heart attack or stroke or kidney issue, something like that anyway. What is the point? You know, I felt so useless that, hey, I'm not making a difference. And that's not who I wanted to be. So I said, things got to change now. And I started what I knew, work on the root cause of the issue. But that takes time. And I didn't have time to, you know, share that with I so called so many patients I needed to see to meet my quota. So as I'm implementing that on myself, you know, Peggy, I started feeling better. I started looking better. I started acting better with my staff and my patients. And you know who took the notice first? My patients. Hmm. And they said, hey, what are you doing, Dr. Nina? You're looking good today. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, what happened? What did you do? Because that's what I want to do. Yeah. And, you know, it started just like that. And I said, oh, so I made this change. This is what I'm eating. These are the vitamins I started. And they said, give me that. Sign up me up. Sign me up for that. And that's really how it started. And it was a chain reaction. Mm -hmm. Amazing results. Yeah. Then, no side effects of the medicine, no titrating dose. And before I knew it, as I was seeing those patients back, instead of adding more medicine or, you know, uh, increasing the dose of the previous one, I was telling them, hey, you don't need this one anymore because your blood pressure is so much better. Let's cut this down. Oh my God, how many hugs I received. And it was just amazing. Yeah. And that's when I said, okay, wait, that's what I need to do. This is the way I want to make a difference. 
mm-hmm. in my community. It all begins with one person. Yeah. And uh, then I trained further in functional medicine and pediatrics medicine. And I've been doing that for 15 years. Yeah. And you opened yeah. Heal and Cure? Yes. Yeah, I opened uh, Heal and Cure and then we started doing all the only functional medicine. Yeah. So what have you seen change in the last year with the pandemic as far as what patients are coming to you with? What types of concerns, worries, habits? Yeah, I think they're more aware. I think it was a reality check that they can't take help for granted. Mm. They realize that modern medicine, Western medicine is not an answer for everything. They cannot just, health is a privilege. They can't demand it. They can't just uh, assume that they can do whatever you they want to do. And at the end, somebody, some savior will come. There will be a pill or a surgery. Yeah. Some magical bullet will happen which will fix everything. With it's without like work. That. Yes, without work. You know that you have to be, you have to put in your efforts mm-hmm. for help. There is no magic wand. No one has it. And it is realizing that you need to put your part in, your work in, um, to earn your health. And once you have it, though, it is addictive. Because there is nothing like that other than to wake up in the morning and say, hey, I feel amazing. I am ready to, you know, face my day, live my day, enjoy my day. And make a difference for my community. Um, we are social animals. We don't. We live together. We um, rely on each other for the energy. Mm-hmm. And you can't give what you don't have. If you don't feel good, it reflects. It reflects how you're going to interact with your kids, at your work, in your productivity, with your spouse. It just reflects in every phase of your life. Yeah. Um, it all begins with good health. And my my goal is to turn our community into a blue zone. And I know we have been talking about it and we keep talking about it. And, um, and a blue zone being an area of the world where a higher degree of the population lives longer and is healthier than typical. You said it. You said it. You know what is sad about it? That in our country, mm-hmm. we don't have any blue zone yeah. in the United States. That is really sad. But I believe we can make one because I think our community is ready. Mm-hmm. We are ready to uh, imbibe, uh, ready that, yes, there's a direction. Uh, and if there is some more clarity, um, and then you start following it, and then you can start instead of just managing diseases, uh, instead of like you said, reversing or turning around. I don't like use the word reversing casually because then everyone thinks they can reserve it. Probably you haven't let it go in that far. Yeah. So there is a a zone in there. But instead of living with diabetes, reversing it, turning it around. So you can one day say, I don't have diabetes. It's, It's a very powerful statement. It makes you feel good. So where do you see your role in creating a blue zone in the Chicago area? Um, I want to partner and uh, with the Mm like-minded and um, you need a community to do this Mm -hmm. for me to show, um, show the path and we're, because it's not, it's not a magic wand. Right. It's not a pill. It's a lifestyle. And design um, guidelines for most of us to follow. And once you follow, like a curriculum to be a blue zone citizen, yeah. once you follow that curriculum, you're likely to hit all those milestones. Well, remember, it's a long project, right. 
but all along we'll be feeling that, oh, I'm just not living. It's not just another birthday come by and now I can say, oh, I'm a little tired because I'm a year older, instead of saying, hey, I have a little bit more time to enjoy, I can have fun and your mind and body um, together, what you're doing, the quality of life instead of just the, uh, you know. And other getting... people are going to look and say, like your patient said to you, what are you doing differently? And how, how can I do that too? Yeah, it, the best way is to lead by example. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, it is very unfortunate that if you ask most of the physicians, there was a survey taken, mm -hmm. um, how will you like to die? Mm. You know what they said? What? Not in ICU. Not in ICU. Not not like my on a life support. Yeah. That gives an insight. Is an insight there because sometimes we know what we are doing has no there's nothing on the other side, but we are just doing it because someone has declared it as a norm. Yeah. And that's kind of interesting. In the videos we've been doing. And uh -huh. in all of the women featured in, in women in wellness, that's a common theme. That uh -huh. lots of what we're doing is just because that's the norm. That's what's been expected. That's what's been taught. And it's time to who, break those who, norms. Yeah. You know who, who made these norms? And I want to say lobbyist. Mm. And now it gets into probably what's not a scope of this, but there's a lot of politics behind it. Health doesn't need to go through politics. If they have, if someone or most of the population, most of us believe that once they get started taking a blood pressure medicine, they have to take it for the rest of their life. They have a customer for life without even saying anything. And that seems like a good model. You know, once it is done, someone just takes that pill, add more, add more, and then more, then few more to counteract the side effect of more. While on the other side, it is accountability. You know, okay, did you do this? Did you do this? It's, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, it is sad to see that that's how the health system is, has come to. I mean, we spend so much money in health system in our country. But if you look at the quality of life or life expectancy, we are way down. 50 years, we are behind many even developing wow. countries. That's not okay. And so that brings us back so, to the blue zone and, and our choices the and the consequences Correct. of our choices. We can change the consequences of our choice, but we can change our choice. And it has to be very, we, I'm all for, we're a free country. Nothing can be forced on anyone, but they should be given a choice. Mm -hmm. Right now, when something becomes abnormal, you're not given a choice. You just, okay, this is your option. When this happens, you just do this. You take the spell for it. If your knee is hurting, you take a pill. And you keep taking a pill till your butt is ripped apart. Or till you have to have surgery because the pill isn't yes. working any longer. Yes. Yes. So that's that's not okay. Yeah. And it is a different approach. It comes only by education. You can't act on something if you don't know it. So I believe very strongly in creating the blue zone is an educator for our community. Yeah. Let the, get the message out. It's possible. Yes. 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 And I'm looking forward to seeing the Blue Zone in action this year and moving forward. I'm looking forward to everything coming from Dr. Mina. Me too. I'm so excited about this project. Yes. So if we want to follow along, if we want to learn more about both Heal and Cure and Dr. Mina, where do people uh -huh. go? Uh, well, you can uh, go to drmina.com and um, 
there is our philosophy of care and what I believe in mm -hmm. or heal and cure, uh, dot com. Okay. Um, that's where I work or call us. We are at 847-686-4444. Great. Well, fabulous, Dr. Mina. I think we could keep exploring these concepts for an entire video series, but I appreciate your time today and um, looking forward to continuing to work with you and, and helping Likewise. to educate people. Yes. Likewise, it was wonderful to chat with you, Peggy. Thank you, Dr. Mina. Take care.